artist people. Love you. See your dad. I see you, Christine. Let us pray. Father God, first and foremost, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you for yet another day, Father God. We want to say thank you just for being so good, better than good, better than what we even come close to deserving. We thank you for looking beyond our faults, looking beyond our messes, and yet allowing the blood to still run warm through our veins. And because of that, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for this moment, this moment that you have given us the opportunity to just find ourselves in the holiest place in the universe, and that is prayerfully in your presence, Father God. I pray for everyone that's under the sound of my voice. There's somebody saying, yes, God, in the midst of my gratefulness, I still yet have a need to be met. And if we're not praying, Father God, in desperation, we're praying expecting heaven to move. We know that you hear your children. Your word tells us that your ears are open to us. It says your eyes are ever on us. It says your mind is ever on your children. And because of that, we are grateful. We have so much to say thank you for. We have so much to be grateful for. For the movement of our limbs today, Father God, we're grateful. For every batting of the eye and us to be able to see whether it's 2020 or 2020 assisted, we just want to say thank you, Father God, for being able to hear the sweet sounds of nature that you have created and the sounds of our children and our loved ones. We say thank you this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for having a mind to call on the name of Jesus. And we give you praise this afternoon. We thank you, Father God, for your word. That's the only truth that we know. Everything else is a lie or just mere facts. And we stand on your word today. Thank you, Father God, for the many promises and the benefits that you promised your children. Thank you, Father God, for pulling us from the gutter most and placing us in heavenly places, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for interceding for us, Father God, and for ever speaking on our behalf. Thank you for being a healer. Thank you for being a deliverer. Thank you for being a mind regulator. Thank you for being a trouble settler. Thank you for being a way maker. I tell you, some of the things that you've gotten us out of is just absolutely Amen. amazing. We thank you for peace this morning. The enemy thought he had it. He thought he stole it. He thought he conquered it. But yet, you gave us peace in the midst of the storm. Peace that we couldn't even comprehend. You said, my peace I give you. My peace I leave you. And we're so grateful that you had us in mind when you was passing out peace. We thank you, Father God, for your love, Father God, regardless of how hated we are by the adversary. We know that his hate could not come even close to your love that you have for your children. We thank you for being a bridge over troubled water. We thank you for being a shelter in a time of storm. We thank you for being a friend that sticks closer than any brother, Father God. We thank you just for being God all by yourself. You're for your awesomeness, we say thank you. For the joy that we have in our heart today, we say thank you. For the peace, Father God, that you've given us, we say thank you. For the provisions that you give your children on a daily basis, we say thank you, Father God. And because of that, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our mission in your precious name today. We know you asked Jehovah Jireh this morning. You've been a supplier. You've been a supplier of every need. We see you as Jehovah Nisi for every issue that is coming to our lives. You have come and seen about it. And yet there's somebody under the sound of my voice to say that today this is Lord God, come see about me. Come see about this. And we know that you are El Emuna. You are faithful. We know that when we call, you will answer. And we thank you for the many times that you told us no in order to protect us, Father God. We thank you for the many doors that you open that no man can shut. We thank you, Father God, for giving us a covering that protects us from the fiery darts of the enemy. And because of that, we praise your name. We have so much to be grateful for. So I pray right now, Father God, that you meet us in this hour. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart find themselves being acceptable in your sight, Father God. And more than anything else, Father God, don't leave us this way. Make us better, make us wiser, make us stronger. Uh, complete us in the name of Jesus the Christ. And we just want you to be glorified. So today we give it up to you, thanking you once again. Give me all praise, honor, and glory. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, yes, I don't know about y'all, but I still say it right now. We've got so much. I'm not going to speak for you. I've got so much to be thankful for. I've got so much to be thankful for. I don't know about y'all, but I feel that already. I've got so much to be thankful for. When I think about the in many, any, many of the plots that the enemy has put in place for me and my family, to know that God had a plan in place that shut it down, I've got so much to be thankful for. So I'm just asking today, is there somebody that's willing to put on your timeline today? 
I've got so much to be thankful for. I just wonder if somebody would be bold enough to make it public, that would be bold enough to say it so that someone else can hear it, to be bold enough to put your situation on notice. I've got so much to be thankful for. I just want to know if I got one or two witnesses today. So much, so much, so much. So here we go. Um, I'm not going to keep dragging this thing out. Um, some of y'all still got leftovers. Some of y'all got other preachers y'all prefer to hear. Some of y'all got other places to go to. So what I want to do is I just want to get right to it. Um, I see you, Tony Gillum. I'm trying to keep it together, man. I'm telling you. So I'm going to ask my daughter, Alicia, if she would read uh, Lamentations chapter 3, 21 through 23. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Is there anybody today that as you think about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, as you think about God's goodness in your life, are you able to simply say the words, Great is thy faithfulness. If there's somebody feeling that this morning, I don't know about y'all, I'm trying to keep it together. Great is thy faithfulness. I'm telling you, when other folks have let me down, when my circumstances turned the other way, Lord God, you proved yourself to be El Uma El Imuna. Great is thy faithfulness. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a familiar passage. One that I preached from before. Uh, one that I've read before. Some of, some of you Bible scholars, you've been here before. So please, I hope I don't bore you today, but I'm asking if you would join me right now in Luke chapter 17. Take out your Bibles. Y'all know how the preachers say it. Uh, take out your Bibles. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. 11 through 19. I'm going to do the church thing today just for a little bit since some of y'all missed the sanctuary. When you have it, can I get a few folks? I'm just going to look for the first two or three. Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. Can you just put on your timeline? Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. God bless you, Stevie Smith. God bless you. I see you, Mike McBride. I see you. I see you, Jaquan. Jaquan says, Amen. I just need a couple of folks. Luke 17, 11 through 19. If you have it, can you just type in Amen. 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 I'm just looking for I see two. I see you. I got you, Leona. I see you there, Uncle Ike. I got you there, Isaiah. I see your cake. So that means I can go ahead and read. Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. Y'all just humor me for a little bit. It says, And it came to pass, as he went into Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And he, and he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men that were lepers who stood afar. And they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And, and Jesus answered, answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? I'm going to say that again. He said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made thee whole. In some, in some uh, translations it says, Your faith has made you well. So I just want to I just want to spend some time in a text that many of us have spent time in before. And I just want to give a message. I'm talking about this. Now. I was just thinking about this thing today. I'm talking three days, three days after Thanksgiving Day. I was 
What's going on, Ramar? God bless you. And, um, three days after Thanksgiving, it's only been three days after Thanksgiving Day. And on that day, I know many families gathered to pray. They prayed over their meals. I'm talking about folks that don't pray, but maybe two or three times a year, they prayed over their meal and they they prayed over their families and they prayed over their marriages. And there were many folks on Thanksgiving Day, if you gave them an opportunity to speak, they would say, I have so much to thank God for. Is there anybody today that would say, I've got so much to thank God for? So many people said it on Thanksgiving Day, but you know what? Then came Sunday, then came today, and um, the same folks that stood around the tables with their families with tears running down their faces and snot bubbles popping, talking about the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now today, on Sunday, they say, I've got better things to do. I don't have time to listen to a sermon. I don't have time to go to a church service. I don't have time to hear from no preacher. I've got better things to do. I've got better time than to spend time into prayer. I've got better things to do. And um, more important, i got more important things to do. That's what somebody may. Somebody might be saying right now, man, i got to get ready for the game today. And... Um, Somebody might be saying, yo, the weather's starting to change. I got to get out on that lake and drop a line today. And there may be somebody saying, you know what? The brothers are meeting today and I got to meet with the brothers today. And, then, and you know what? Um, the funny thing is, Alicia, that was just three days ago. Just three days ago. It wasn't three weeks ago. Just three days ago when the whole mindset of so many people have already changed. Um, I think about that. Many people prayed three days ago. Lord God, thank you for this food. Mm. I remember when I didn't have none. Somebody said that on Thanksgiving Day. Amen. Somebody might have prayed that prayer. Lord God, thank you for this family. I remember a time when I felt so alone. Thank you. That somebody on Thanksgiving Day came and said, Lord God, thank you for healing my body, man. And I, I thought COVID-19 was going to take me out. I thought cancer was going to take me out. Um, It wasn't looking good. I want to say thank you. I got so much to be thankful for. They said that three days ago. And somebody was saying, yes, sir, Lord God, you have been so good. Thank you. I want to thank you. Some prayed and cried. And yet at the same point in time, just as fast as they started crying, three days later, some have already forgotten. Amen. Three days, three days, three days. So I'm talking to 39 people right now. I know some of y'all got more people in the room. I'm just talking about the, the numbers that I see on the line. Is there anybody, now that Thanksgiving Day is over and gone, is there anybody still giving thanks? Is there yes. anybody still saying, yes. Lord God, I thank you? Is there I anybody do. saying, you know what, thank Lord you. God, I know it's three days thank gone, but I still remember. I remember I just a few weeks ago, Things weren't looking so good. I remember a few months ago, things wasn't looking so good. I remember it was a year ago, things wasn't looking so good. But I remember and I'm thankful. Is there anybody that's still saying, Lord God, I still have so much yes. to say thankful for, Thank to be Jesus. thankful for. I just wonder if I got Thank a few folks that ain't ashamed Thank to say you, something. I see you, Terry. Terry Thank Coleman you, says she's still giving thanks. She's one of those who knows what COVID-19 felt like. And she says, you know what? I'm still giving thanks. It made me think of somebody. I'm going to tell y'all how we do. And, and I don't really care. I called this out. I was talking to somebody else about this recently. But I thought of Lance Armstrong. Mm. Um, mm. This guy was on the top of his sport. He was known at that time to be the greatest cycler or cyclist. Yeah, Alicia, I got it right. In the world. Um, best in the world. And... I'm talking Tour de France as he was knocking them out and Olympics. He was knocking them out. And this guy, all of a sudden, he was stricken with cancer. Right. He was stricken with cancer. And, and also, not only was he stricken with cancer, but he was healed of cancer. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the stage was set, man. The, the, 
the ground was prepped perfectly for him. And, and all of a sudden, I remember a, a reporter asked the ultimate question. It says, now, um, he wanted to know if he was going to give God credit for healing him or helping him beat cancer. That's what the um, reporter did. He set him up for it. But his response was different. His response was, you know what? Everybody needs something to believe in. That's what he said. He says, well, what I believe in, I believe in surgery. Mm. He says, I believe in chemotherapy. And I believe in my doctor. So evidently he was saying, I'm not telling you I believe that God did anything for me. And how soon do we forget? Amen. Soon after that, he got caught out there. I'm going to tell you how things work out. He got caught doping. So now this guy that was sitting at the top of the world who was put on the perfect platform to proclaim the goodness of God denies who God is. and He falls from the top straight down to the bottom. And I place him in that category when I think about Lance Armstrong and what I just read. Um, I place him in the category of the nine. How soon do we forget? So I'm going to ask three days later, who on here can I ask the question, are you one of the nine? Or are you truly still grateful? Yeah, Kate, I remember 20 years ago how I'm God grateful. healed you from cancer. I talk about that, and I'm so glad that you, that you continue to tell people that you know a healer. But I thought about him, and I looked at how I consider Lance Armstrong to be one of those nine, you know, who forgot. And he um, forgot to give God thanks for what he has already done. So I'm going to ask anyone, someone again, is there anyone that would simply say, I'm so grateful for what the Lord has already done. I'm not I talking am. about somebody that's looking forward to God to doing something new. Stevie, I'm this grateful. ain't no sexy message. I'm kind of calling cats out today. And I'm grateful. I'm not, I'm, I come to step on some toes not to be mean, but to uh -uh. get somebody's attention. So I just wonder if there's anybody who would still say three days later as the world has gone back to doing what they do, say, Lord God, I've got so much to be thankful for. This is not yes. a long message. I'm talking about three days later. I asked, where are you? And did you forget already? And if so, I say to you, shame on you. How soon do we forget? I want to talk about church folk. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about church folk. Uh -oh. Dion, I'm talking about church folk. I already know how the world acts, but I want to talk about church folk, Jaquan. Um, church folk, some church folk going to get ticked off right now because I'm about to mess around and call some cats out. And it's going to be some uncomfortable shoes that people don't like. That I'm going to tell you, if you can fit it, go ahead and wear it. And hopefully you outgrow it. I'm going to step on a few toes today, but again, I'm not trying to be mean, I thought about the one leper and the nine, and um, many of us, I'm going to put me in a category with you, even though I say something different, just so you won't get mad and stop and hang up on me. Many of us are the nine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you the question, are you the nine? What I mean by that, so blessed by Jesus, but you know what? You don't live like you blessed. You get where I'm coming from. So blessed by God, but you don't live like you blessed. Um, we are good with going through the religious acts. You get what I'm saying? And that's the reason why I looked at that part where he says, you know what, we ain't got a problem with going to show the elders. You know what I'm saying? Jumping through the religious acts. He said, go show the elders. And they none of them had a problem with taking off going to show the elders. You get what I'm saying? A lot of us church folks don't have a problem, Stevie Smith, with jumping through the religious hoops. You get what I'm saying? Um, because we are for show saints. You know, we want folks to see us doing what we do. Look at me now. Take a good look at me. Watch my shout. Hit that little doom, 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 doom on the piano and watch me do my little dance, my little hucklebuck. Watch me knock out some of these chairs and watch me slap some of these other folks that ain't smart enough to move because they don't understand that I'm faking that I'm filled with the spirit. 
watch me put on this show for show saints. And you know what? Some of you do it well. You pray with, you pray with real pretty. You get what I'm saying? You pray real pretty. You got some good words. Your vernacular, oh my goodness. And some of y'all mugs from down south can really put that twang in that thing and get folks going. You get what I'm saying? Oh, you got that part down real good. And, and you can do the church thing. You get what I'm saying? You do it really well. And um, you know what? You even got a Bible app that you do and you got a few folks on it. And you know what? You quote scriptures really well. But I'm asking the question. And how many of you are not just talking Bible, but living Bible today? Hey, I'm talking man. to somebody today, and I know that somebody's struggling with me already, Stevie Smith, but you stay with me. I just need a couple. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about is there somebody today, three days after Thanksgiving, that's saying, you know what? I'm still giving God thanks, and you get where I'm coming from? Because I got so much to give God thanks for. You get where I'm coming from? I just want you to hang with me for a little while. I'm talking about true Thanksgiving is an attitude. It's an attitude. It's it's a lifestyle of gratitude. That's what true Thanksgiving is. It's not just saying, you know what, on Sunday morning or whatever, I got so much to be thankful for. It's an attitude. You get what I'm saying? Uh, any grateful folks on here three days later, and, or have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Are you one of the nine? You get what I'm saying? Have you forgotten? I want to say this. It's time for y'all to stop. Stop the madness, church folk. I'm talking to you this morning. I already know how the world acts, but I'm talking to the church folk today, Kate. Somebody ain't going to like me today. I'm expecting Al somebody to drop off because the shoe don't fit. It, shoots, it fits too well to you right now. I want to talk to somebody mm. today. It's time for you to stop following the nine, y'all, and start following Jesus. And I'm talking about for real, for real. Amen. Amen. There is so much to learn from this one leper. I want to talk about this one guy. There's so much to learn from this one. It's, it's so much to learn from this remnant, Kate. There's so much to learn from this exception to the rule. There's so much to learn from this standout. You get what I'm saying? There's so much to learn. And when I look at that one, there's a message there. And, and I, what I see there is this. Um, I see true praise and gratitude. And I want to break it down with scripture today. You know what? I was telling my father, I ain't knocking you topical preachers. I'm not knocking y'all. If some of y'all, if, if that's your calling, that's fine. But I want to be able to expound on this word a little bit. There's a lesson in this thing. When you look at that one, if you look at that one, and it's, it's bigger than the surface, and I'm going to try to help somebody today. So I'm going to revisit verses 15 and 16. It says, one of them, I started to read it like a preacher to Quran, but I'm going to just read it. It says, one of them, when he saw he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God, mm. fell on his face. At his feet, mm -hmm. giving him thanks. So let me break down this guy's praise. Can I break down his praise? Oh, can, I, can I do this? Break I'm getting my wife permission to break it down. I know somebody don't want to hear this. The first thing is when I looked at this guy's praise and when I looked at his gratitude, when I looked at it, his praise, the first thing you see, his praise was quick. Mm. It was prompt and it was timely. Mm hmm. The word says that as soon as this guy saw he was healed, he turned around and came back immediately. Now, he didn't wait to make it to the priest. He came right back. He didn't take his time. He came back most rich ticks. See, some of y'all, the Lord has done some great things for, and you still ain't going back and said thank you. You just take it as it's, it's what's supposed to be that way. And I'm mm -hmm. going to say shame on the one who's say been it. blessed with the indeed blessings and you're still chasing after the nine. Shame on you. Mm. You're still doing you. You're still thinking it's all about you. And if you're truly grateful, you should be pursuing Jesus. And I'm talking about you ought to be thanking him not tomorrow, not next week, but you ought to be thanking him right now. So I'm going to give somebody in the, in the privacy of your home right now, wherever you are, when you think about the goodness of Jesus, the least you can do right now is just say, Lord God, I thank you. I know it's Lord three God, days after I Thanksgiving thank you. and you probably put it all out on the table. I but for you, somebody Jesus. that knows he's better than that, you ought to just simply thank just say, Lord God, wow. I thank you. I want to ask the question today. Are there 
there any folks that are grateful today that's under the I sound am. of my voice? I'm talking about really grateful. I'm yes. not just talking about church grateful. I'm talking about grateful, grateful. You get what I'm saying? Anybody that finds him worthy of your praise this morning, anybody find him worthy of giving your worship this morning. You know yes. what? COVID could have, COVID-19 could have killed some of y'all. You get what I'm yes. saying? Don't get it twisted. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Some of y'all need to know cancer could have killed you, but yes. it didn't. Somebody ought to give God thanks. And, and Thank some you, of y'all who thought you was losing your mind, depression could have killed you, if, you it, if, if God had allowed it to be so. And, and mm. some of y'all who's hung up on them chitlins, hypertension could have killed you, but it didn't. And some of y'all who've been running in streets, you need to know that the streets could have killed you, but it didn't. You get what I'm saying? And I yes. want you to hear me today. Uh, some of y'all could have been homeless. Yes, Lord. Some of y'all could have been childless. Thank you. And some of you could have been in jail, but God, somebody ought to be thinking, but God, this morning, and he chose to bless you. And not only did he choose to bless you, but he chose to keep you through all of your foolishness. How soon does some of us forget, Sister Juliet? But I'm going to tell somebody today that you ought to yes, give Lord. God some praise today. And you ought to say, Lord God, I thank you today. I and do. you ought to tell the world I got so much to be grateful do, for. I'm just talking to somebody. Yeah. But you know what, Alicia Brown, some of these folks ain't going to hear me. So I might as well go Hallelujah. back and talk about the one this morning. I'm talking about the one. The second thing that you learned out of these scriptures with this thing is um his praise and his thanksgiving. It was intense, y'all. It was mm. intense. It mm. was intense. I'm talking about it was full of fervor. It wasn't cute and it was really sincere. You get what I'm saying? Why? Because the scripture said it this way. It says he glorified God with a loud voice. And what that's telling me is what well, he wasn't ashamed of Jesus. But some of y'all, y'all mess around and only pull Jesus out when you're around other folks that say they're believers. Yes, and, yes. and some of y'all don't want to even carry Jesus' name with you because you sure don't act like some of the things that Jesus acted mm. before you. Say you know it. what? But he wanted the world to know what Jesus did. You get what say I'm saying? It. He didn't whisper it. You get what I'm saying? This this cat mm. right here was on fire. And see, most Christians are blessed. And what happens is with some of us, mm. you know, after we get past the initial encounter with Christ, we tend to lose our fire. True. And the funny and the sad thing is, is this. And I'm talking to some of y'all gifted and talented folks on here. Another shoe, if it can fit, go ahead and wear it. See, something happens is God blesses up with us with gifts and stuff like that. And you know what? We don't just want to simply use our gifts to bless others. We're no longer on fire because we see we're gifted. Now we're for hire. You get what I'm yes. saying? That's hey, how much you're going to pay yes. me and what you're going to do for me is what you always ask when it's time for you to serve. But you get what I'm saying? Um, but what happens is you shifted your energy and your motives to things in the world. In other words, you're chasing after the nine. How soon? Do we forget? I'm talking. Is there anyone grateful on here this afternoon? Is there someone that's saying, Lord God, I got so much to thank you for? I anybody do. saying, Lord God, I want to say thank you right I now. Do. And I know the pastor talking, but I need to stop right now thank just to say God. thank you because it could have been me. Jesus. But it God, you been. worked it out for me. Let me just go back to it the one. Alicia. Ain't nobody trying to hear me. So I'm going to get through this message because folks ain't trying to hear me today. Another thing I see about this guy, about the one. And when I think about his praise and his thanksgiving, it was it was full of humility, mm. humility. He fell, the word says, at the feet of Jesus. Mm. You know, the crazy thing is, man, we got so many people that are blessed, but they bow into everyone and everything else but God. Uh -oh. Yeah, I know. I didn't offend somebody right there. Uh -oh. Somebody trying to lie and say it ain't them. Some of them still chasing after the nine, regardless of what the Lord has done. So again, I say it. Just three short days later. Three short days later. How soon do we forget? But I ask the question again, Tyra, right? Is there anyone still giving God thanks? Yes. Even after Thanksgiving Day. Yes, yes. If that's you, you ought to be saying, Lord God, thank you. I've got so much to be grateful for. I do. Thank you, Jesus. This guy, though, I'm going to go back to the one. He showed me one more thing. Newsflash, whether y'all know it or not, I've been teaching. And some of y'all aren't teachable. But for the teachable ones, I've been teaching today. And the last thing I saw in this guy, when he gave thanks, it was worship. Mm. Anyone says today, you know what I choose to worship in the midst of everything that I go on, that's going on in my life, Lord God, because you've worship. been so good, because of who you are, I choose to I worship. Choose to Not worship. only did he fall at the feet of Jesus, but... 
He Thank fell at the Jesus. feet of Jesus and yes. he glorified God, giving yes. thanks to him, which means he worshiped yes. the Lord. Is there anybody he here who chooses God. to worship he today? Loves. I'm talking about worshiping without yes. explanation yes. to anyone else or worshiping without Thank feeling Jesus. like they owe someone an excuse of why you're worshiping. Um, mm. And not just in words, but in your actions. Mm. And someone saying, well, pastor... How do I worship God with my actions? The first thing some of y'all trifling folks can do is start loving people, man, instead of thinking it's all about you. And be willing to serve others in need without needing to be seen and posting it on social media every time you do something or broadcasting mm. it when you're in something like, hey, we did this for somebody. I'm talking about honestly serving others and, and loving God's people. That's how we can truly show God that we worship him by loving his own people. Mm -hmm. Also, stop mm -hmm. trying to measure your sins up against the sins of other people, thinking mm. that your sins is lighter than mm. somebody else's sins. I know I'm talking to somebody mm. today, but they ain't trying to hear me, Tyra, and that's okay. Um, here is how it all turned out for this guy. This is how it turned out. This is the end of my message. I told you I didn't have a long message, but I wanted to get you to where it turned out, uh, how it turned out. And um, it says it like this. Um, Jesus said, um, to the one after he realized that he was the only one faithful enough to come back, um, the one who actually remembered that what he had done for him, the one who was truly grateful for what he had done. He says, rise and go your way. He said, your faith has made you well. And then, of course, in the King James Version, it says, your faith has made you whole. The Greek word for that last word is sozo, S-O-Z-O. -O. I like to teach, y'all. Can I teach? Um, and it's a term meaning to be totally saved. It means to be totally delivered and totally healed. See, what, what y'all might be missing is this, is um, not only did this guy get the healing that the other nine got, but he was made whole. Is there somebody under the sound of my voice saying, Lord God, I thank you for the healing or there may be somebody saying, Lord God, I thank you for the deliverance, but Lord God, I want to be all that you want me, want to, me be. to be. And Lord yes. God, I want to be made whole. And Lord God, yes. I want to be complete through and through from the yes. rooter to the tutor. I want you to understand yes. because of this guy's faithfulness, God, that Jesus didn't only heal him, but Jesus made him whole. I'm trying to help somebody mm. this afternoon, Kate. And I know some of these folks ain't trying to hear me because I seen the numbers drop and it wasn't sexy enough for them. But for the ones that's hanging on, I got something for you if you would just hold on to it just for a little bit. You know what? He was not only healed, but he was delivered and set free. He was made whole because of his faith mm. and his gratitude. You know what? So many of y'all I'm talking to on here right now can honestly say, yep, the Lord healed my body, but yes. you ain't whole. Some of you might be able to say, yep, I've been delivered, but you ain't whole. And mm. somebody might be able to say, the Lord blessed me with this, but you ain't whole. And the mm. reason why is because you ain't showed no real gratitude and you definitely ain't showing no faith. And because of that, you're still incomplete. But conjunction Junction, I got a function here. Uh, you can be fixed, y'all. I want you to understand. It ain't over for you yet. You can be made complete and you can be made whole. All it takes is a heart of thanksgiving. First, start off by saying, Lord God, I thank you and meaning it for changing. And then another thing it takes thank is just you. a little bit Jesus. of faith. You get what I'm saying? In order for you to grow into mm. great faith, you got to have a little bit of faith. Mm. And, and my goodness, my goodness, you need to give credit to whom credit is to. You need to be giving God some praise today. Yes. You ought to be saying, Lord God, I thank you and yes. you ought to be giving them a few hallelujahs every now and then mm. and you ought to be saying Lord God I bless your holy name every mm. now and then if you're really looking to be whole I need you to understand that's all it takes right there it, it takes a little bit of thanksgiving it takes some faith and it takes some praise but you know what you just happy with the deliverance um mm. you just happy with the you just happy with the healing and the funny thing is is you Pray. might be happy about it but you ain't grateful for it I'm talking to somebody and I'm calling Pray. you out if the shoe fits go ahead and wear it mm. um but the, uh, I I want you to understand this, but some people are really quick to forget, Dion. Mm. Some people are really quick to forget. Um, but I'm going to tell y'all something. This is Brown. And like I said, I'm done. Um, you talking I have to me? so much talking to, me. to be thankful for. 
I got it, man. It ain't always peaches and creams. And mm -hmm. every now and then I cry every now and then. And every now and then I feel a little heavy, but I got so much to be grateful for. And I know every now and then my body ain't doing what it, what I wanted to do, but I got so much to be grateful for. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes, Alicia Brown, I am misunderstood. And, and But I'm going to tell you something. When I think about those that misunderstood me, misunderstand me, God knows me through and through. Know me down to the last hair. I got so much to be thankful for. And, and every now and and it seems like the world is on my shoulder and yes. it's pushing me down to the ground yes. and see Wilder. But I'm going to tell you something. In the midst of it all, I've got so much to be thankful for. And, and I know, y'all, I ain't living in no 4,000 square foot house. Not that I need it. And I know that I may not have the greatest uh, mm. of, of furniture like some of y'all must mm. have. But I got so much to be grateful for. I'm talking about a cat who didn't have a place for a minute to call home and he gave me shelter anyway. Kate Neal, you just don't know how much I love you, baby. I'm going to always love you. God gave me you, and I'm so, I'm so grateful that he gave me favor and sent me your way. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not afraid to tell you what the Lord has done in my life. I am delivered, and I'm so grateful that he's done that. I am set free, and I'm so grateful for it. I've been healed time after time after time after time, and I just look back and say, look what the Lord has done. Yeah, I appreciate the doctors, and you know what? Sometimes I appreciate the medicine. And even though I think a lot of times they give you medicine so that you need more medicine. But mm. I'm so glad that I know a doctor that writes a perfect prescription for me. And, and sooner or later, I won't have to go through aches and pains mm. in this side of this world. And I know that even though I may not be living in a mansion, but I'm grateful where I'm at. But I yes. know that there's a mansion yes. being prepared for me. I've got so much to be thankful yes. for. And you know what, man? I sat back on Thanksgiving and I, it was a moment that happened in the house. In that moment, I felt the love of my family all there in one place not thought about how the enemy has attempted to tear us apart but I just felt the love in that place and I said Lord God I got so much to be grateful and thankful for you yes. kept us together and you put us here right now and you know what the one thing I found out is your love never fails it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what happened we can look beyond each other's faults and we can look beyond each other's flaws because yes. at the end of the day the only thing that matters is love and I'm so glad that you allowed to rest in this place right here and I'm gonna tell you something I want I want to dare somebody today to just Think about what the Lord has done in your life. And you'd be crazy to be able to sit there and say, you know what? I'm not giving God credit. I'm going to give credit to modern medicine. And I'm going to give credit to my job. And I'm going to give credit to the crew I'm running with. And mm -hmm. I'm going to give credit to my club today. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something right mm -hmm. now. You're going to find yourself not being whole. And you're going to find yourself incomplete. And you're going to find yourself itching for a scratch that the world can't give you. But when you get to a point... But Thanksgiving is not only on your mind, but it's in your heart. It's a part of your lifestyle. And you're walking in faith and you're trusting God. I'm going to tell you, God will do some absolutely marvelous things. But yes. first things first, I know the greens may be gone or very few left. But I'm going to tell you right now, you've got so much to be thankful for. And I dare you to give God thanks. You get what I'm saying? Um, I want someone to talk to somebody right now and let them know that, uh, tell them, I've got so much to be thankful I for. I dare somebody right now to let them know that you're grateful. Is there somebody so willing to say, yes, to I'm grateful? For. Is there somebody there to not only say I'm grateful, but you're ready to live grateful? Yes. You get what I'm saying? There was so much, so much to be thankful for. But you can't only talk gratitude. you got to live gratitude. Yes. God wants to really know that you appreciate all that he has done. I got it. It ain't sunshine and days this day, but it sure enough could be a whole lot worse. Uh, I trust me. I'm talking to some folks that are about to bury loved ones. I'm talking about, I can go down the street here and take about a, maybe a five minute ride and find someone sleeping under a bridge, but I've got so much to be grateful for. That's not where I'm at right now. And you know what I know, man, there are husbands and wives at each other's throat, but man, I'm looking across the table, man, at the love of my life. That ain't my testimony right now. I got so much to be thankful for. Let me tell you something. There's some parents out there that ain't said words to their kids in years, but that's not where I'm at right now. I got so much to be thankful for and yes tragedy has struck in many homes this week but that ain't where I'm standing at right now I got so much to be grateful for so I just want someone to hear me today um, I double dog dare somebody I know it's been three days but come on it ain't been that long you ought to be giving God some thanks today and you ought to be thanking him for being so good and, and I know you might have aches and pains today but you're inhaling and exhaling yes, and I am. you know what you might say you know what I gotta thank wear you, these Jesus. glasses and I can't see like thank I you, used Jesus. to but thank God for thank the vision you, anyway you ought to be giving thank God you, praise him your word thank ought to you, be Jesus. I got so much you, to be grateful yes, for that's yes. all I'm 
I'm going to say. I'm just going to, you know what? I can't make somebody grateful. And you know what? I can't coach you into being happy and appreciative. But I'm going to tell you something right now. He didn't have to do what Buddy did. I'm telling you, Dion. He didn't have to do what Buddy did. And I know it may not be exactly the way you want it, but but the Lord has been good. You get what I'm saying? And so, again, I just want to encourage you today to remember that one. And I'm going to ask you a question for others. Are you one of the nine? I, I hope you're not one mm. of the nine. But if you're one of the nine, I'm trying to tell you right now, you'll never be all that God has called for you to be mm. chasing after the nine. Don't you forget what the Lord has done. And, and as you remember, you have to be full of gratitude. And he deserves your praise. And yes. he deserves your honor. And if you're going to bow to something, you need to bow to Jesus and stop bowing to some of the nonsense that you have been bowing to. You need to stop drinking the toxic Kool-Aid of this world and go back and feast on God and feast on the bread of life. You get where I'm coming from. But until then, you'll never be whole. But as far as me, as far as my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm talking as far as me and as far as my house, we will serve the Lord. So again, I'm just going to say it to the one who messed around and let to get the best of you. How soon do we forget? Mm. So here we go. I want to talk to somebody this afternoon. This is it. I told y'all. Um, Maybe there's someone who says, you know what, I, I've heard of Jesus, but I don't know Jesus. Um, I've heard of Mama's Jesus and Daddy's Jesus and Grandma's Jesus, but honestly, Pastor, I don't know him. You know what, um, I would be honored to be the one to introduce you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hit me up on the inbox. I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. And maybe there's someone that even before three days ago, you were struggling. Maybe you didn't have that family moment. Maybe you were by yourself. Maybe uh, you're hurting. Or maybe something has hit you since three days ago. Maybe you're suffering the loss of a loved one. Maybe you got bad news. And man, you're struggling just to be able to say, Lord, thank you. I, what I want to do is, I believe that if you make contact with the Savior, if you be able to press beyond whatever your press is, whether it's pain, whether it's sorrow, whether it's guilt, whether it's oppression, I believe that if you're willing to press beyond that and make the slightest of contact with Jesus, faithfully, you'll be made whole. So I'm going to ask, is there anybody willing to join me at the altar. If it's you, and I'm only going to give you about three minutes. Just say, Pastor, I'm joining you at the altar. You don't have to tell me why. Just say, I'm joining you at the altar. And also, what I'm going to do is for those who are standing in the gap for others, go ahead and put the names of those folks on the timeline. As I continue to pray for healing over those that have reached out to me, I mentioned uh, the family of Clarissa Hunt. I speak healing over Patrice Belcher. I speak healing over all of those who says, Lord, lay your hand on me. I pray over every pastor, every spiritual leader who's been dealing with how do I minister effectively to my people in a time of pandemic? I pray for the one who feels like, man, I don't know if I can make it to the next minute. I, I dare you to just say, yes, I'm joining you at the altar. I pray for every stressed out family, every stressed out marriage. Just simply say, Pastor, I'm joining you at the altar. I see the names popping up and keep on putting on those names that, that are on the prayer list. I see you. We got another minute. Just another minute. I just want to know who's joining me at the altar. I see you. I see you, Nia. I see you. I see you, Desiree. Somebody saying, yes, Pastor, I'm joining you at the altar. I'm joining you at the altar. I see you, Patrice. I know we're healer, man. Roger Dixon was worried about his mama. They were going in to do surgery, worried about what they were going to find. And I got the word this morning that the doctor didn't find anything. And I'm telling Amen. you right now, Amen. I know a healer, y'all. Amen. I know a healer. Anybody says, yes, Pastor, I'll meet you at the altar. Mm. I see you, Deaconess Brown. I see you, Robert Jackson. I see you, Alicia. Yes, yes. Um, yes, yes. 
Uh, Alicia.